right, good morning guys. Hey, it's a delight and a privilege to come here and share a little bit this morning about what we do and also offer our local community. Uh, basically, I'm a life skills educator, so what that looks like is I go into schools right around New Zealand and really empower our kids to take ownership for their own journey. As parents, we can be the best parent in the world, but our kids can still make poor choices. I speak on average about 50 to 80 schools a year. I not only do that, I work as a volunteer for St John Ambulance. I've been working down here for 10 years. And so really, um, we see the end result of poor choices in regard to substance use and abuse, assaults, all sorts of other things that happen, unfortunately, when our young people aren't really processing properly the implications of their decisions. And, and part of what I do is I like, I'm a real practical bloke. I like to use what I've learnt to help others. And so being a volunteer and you see life so frail, uh, it reinforces why I do what I do in the school. And, uh, but I wasn't always those things. In fact, for 20 years, I was caught up in the world of addiction where I was addicted to heroin and many other substances. That's another story. I haven't got time to uh, broaden on that today. Suffice it to say, it was through my choices that nearly ended my life. And in 1995, I had a series of overdoses where I clinically died three times. The last time I was dead, I was on the floor for 25 minutes. A guy was jumping down on my chest, and no matter what he did, he couldn't get me breathing. When I woke up, I had this epiphany, this sudden realisation, I was, I was about to die unless I changed my choices. And so, do you know what the hardest thing I ever did? Was I picked up the phone and I rang for help, and I said, bro, I need your help to face this thing or I'm going to die. I was smart enough to do that, and fortunately, many years later, things changed. I changed my associations, I changed my friends, and as a result, everything changed, little by little, incrementally, until uh, what, we're, what we're doing today. I spent two and a half years in a rehab in Whakatane, where I really was confronted with the issues on why I'd started using in the first place. So when I came out of that, my twin brother and I sat down with our wives and we reflected on how could I use all of what I'd been through to help others. You see, it's true what we're saying before, when we leave this earth we take nothing, but it's what we leave behind. I want to leave a legacy of change behind me. You know, you can have all the money in the world, but it don't make a bar of difference if you can't leave something behind to have an impact in the lives of others. So my twin brother and I sat down and we very quickly recognised that there's always something positive out of something negative. So we formed AMP for Life, a charitable trust in 2002, and we've been running that for 14 years, speaking to thousands of people, empowering young people specifically to make better choices through education, sport, whānau, cultural and positive pursuits, setting a new path for themselves uh, and also for future generations. There's a conflict going on in our cities, our towns and our homes where young people are being pulled into a lifestyle of drink and drugs and many other at-risk behaviours. Trying to fit in a world and find significance and acceptance in a world which is fickle and unforgiving. Battling peer pressure and many other challenges, faced with choices which can be potentially life-defining. Some step across the void into brokenness and hurt and uh, some never recover. And I see that firsthand as an ambo. We're confronted every day with the increasing problems in society which impact us all, whether through our kids and grandkids. We want to address some of those factors and ongoing issues and provide solutions. So 14 years on and over 300,000 young people, we want to continue to share a message of hope and inspiration to empower our young people to take ownership for their own decisions. We also recognise that substance abuse not only affects kids in schools but also has a massive impact with industry. And all of us can possibly recognise that we've had employees which may have been dabbling in that field. And with the new health and safety regulations and everything, no longer can employers turn a blind eye to this thing. We need to confront it. And so what we wanted to do was to provide solutions to help change behaviours and attitudes in the workplace in regard to drug use. Whether it's time off work, substance abuse, uh, unnecessary... Um, time off work, theft, dishonesty, all these other things that happen as a result of substance use, uh, we want to provide solutions for. We provide presentations that help employers identify substance use in the workplace, but we also recognise that you guys are parents and grandparents and have kids of your own, where you might need tools and solutions to give you the heads up on what's happening in your own kids' world. 
So for years we've done that. We've worked with forestry. We spoke to 1,000 forestry workers in 2009, KTML, and many other employers which want to provide solutions to their employees. More and more, OSHA's and ACC are collaborating to make sure that industry are continuing to be proactive in this area and improve safe practices. Yeah. Amp for Life continues to partner with industry and local business by offering these services <laughs> in the workplace and provide educational and inspirational presentations to combat these ongoing issues. If we can add value to your sector or industry, feel free please to contact me. We have uh, some information down on table 32. But as a father of five, I have five children of my own. And I'm often aware of my own shortcomings as a father. One of the hardest things I've had to do is to get down on my hands and knees and look my children in the eyes and say, I'm sorry, Dad got it wrong. And that's taught me great humility and have helped to un let my kids understand that I'm still human, that I still make mistakes. As parents and grandparents, we have the stuff that's coming into our society. Tw the last six months, there's been a billion dollars of methamphetamine across our borders. And that target destination is our cities, our communities, and ultimately our children. Mm. So we want to put up our hand and say, look, we want to be here as a resource and advocate on behalf of you for your children, advocate for the schools as well, to be a part of the chain of helping them make better choices. Mm. Thank you so much for your time. Kia ora koutou.